Welcome to Buy, Hold, Sell, brought to you by Livewire Markets. My name is Bella Kidman and welcome to our first ever LIC special. Today, we're diving into the world of listed investment companies. Recently, Jeff Wilson, the king of LICs, waged war on the underperformers by launching his new fund with the ticket code WAR, hence the war pun, which aims to take over companies trading below NTA. So today we've invited James Whelan from VFS Group and Chris Bricky from Stockspot to chat about two underperforming LICs and three of the sector's best. Chris, I'll start with you. We'll keep the Jeff Wilson theme running here. First up, we have Wham Capital, currently trading at a 19.2% premium to NTA. Buy, hold or sell? Bella, for me, it's a sell. I've got no idea why it trades at such a premium because it's underperformed the index over three years, over five years and over seven years. It's been in the bottom quartile for most of that period. Actually, most of its outperformance came 10 plus years ago, which is pretty typical of, of value tilted managers in Australia. Um, it's more volatile than the index and you're not com compensated with better returns. And I think for me, the worst part about this fund is that it doesn't have a high watermark. And so the fund manager is actually motivated to take big swings because if they have big underperformance, it doesn't matter. And if they have big outperformance, they get to pay themselves. So I'd avoid it. James, it's been somewhat of a good performer, down around 3.5% over the last six months, but you cannot argue with the 7% dividend yield. Buy, hold or sell? Yeah, the dividend yield is pretty good. So if you hold it, keep on holding it. But if you don't hold it, you might not want to stick into it. So hold for me on that one. Chris really summed it up beautifully and he swung me around. I was a buyer until a few seconds ago. So Chris got me on that one. But the, yeah, the, the, they, are, they are persuaded by that. But Jeff is an, an amazing manager. If you have it, hold it, uh, but don't get rid of it. Okay, James, sticking with you, next up, we've got Regal Funds Management, ticket code RF1, run by none other than Phil King, trading mm. at a 15% premium 20A, buy, hold or sell? Really quickly, and I'll tell you why. It's a buy from me. Uh, it's a fantastic price. They just paid out a, a, a distribution at about 20% or something, just on just on the profits they've made. Really quick, really quick anecdote. When they went IPO, I looked Phil in the eye at the roadshow and I said, why are you doing this? And he looked me back and he said, James, he didn't know, he said, mate, <laughs> I'm doing this so that I can be the best in the market. I'm doing this so that I can beat the other guy. The drive from that team is sensational. It's a beautiful long short fund and they've got some great ideas and I'd say it's a buy. He is the king. Chris, RF1 up over 67% in the last 12 months. Stunning performance compared to the 23% benchmark. Is this LIC looking regal to you? Buy, hold or sell? I think, Bella, yeah, the same as Wilson. Fantastic management team, well-known fund manager. I'd be a buyer of both of their businesses. But again, with this one, I'd be a seller of the fund. I think even though the returns have been fabulous over the last year, any fund that charges a 1.5% per year fee and 20% 20, 20 um, performance fee, and at least this one does have a high watermark, it's just going to be very difficult over the long run to actually get great risk adjusted returns. Um, so, yeah, for me, any fund that charges like that, I'd avoid Chris, our final outperformer in the LIC space is the Plato Income Maximizer, all the best and biggest equity income providers on the ASX. Buy, hold or sell? Uh, Bella, it may not surprise you, but it's a sell for me. So actually, if you look at the top 10 holdings of this fund, it's actually very similar to what you get in a dividend themed ETF. Um, the main difference being you pay eight times as much to get access to this active fund. Um, yeah, they try and exploit these tax inefficiencies and use some quantitative models, but it really has higher turnover compared to a passive model. And therefore it creates a bit of a tax hurdle that you have to get over as well. I think it's really popular with especially retirees because it pays that monthly fully frank dividend. Um, but I don't think dividend chasing is a smart strategy. You've got to look at a total return basis. And for me, it's, it's an avoid. Um, just use a, an index um, dividend focused ETF instead. James, it's trading at a 14.5% premium to NTA, but they are up 25% in the last 12 months. Buy, hold or sell? It's buy if you're the right investor. You need monthly, you need monthly income. That that these are the guys to go with it. It's a good, it's a good mix of Australian stocks. It's, you know, it's it's a, probably a good replacement for having, you know, maybe the top 200 or something in there with that yield involved as well. So it's it's a buy from me. Okay, well, we've been through the best. Now let's move to some of the laggards. First up, we have VGI Partners VG1 trading at a 7% discount to NTA. James, buy, hold or sell? Rob Luciano is a gun manager and the VGI team is sensational. I like their products and I like what they do. It's a buy from me. And uh, I think they've got a really good long short fund and, and, and a really good assessment in a way of sort of picking out the, the stocks that you may not think about. And, uh, and it's a good way of doing it. it. It definitely saves you the hassle of going out and doing it yourself. And, uh, and it's a buy. Chris, VGI was actually one LIC that Jeff Wilson said he's had his eye on. So do you think that VGI can pick up on performance? Buy, hold or sell? Uh, for me, it's, it's another sell. Um, again, an expensive fund charging 1.5% and a 15% performance fee. 
again, regardless of how smart the manager is, it's just something you, you can avoid and, and own the index instead. Okay, Chris, I'm crossing my fingers that I've got one for you here. Our final underperformer for today is Antipodes Global. They're trading at a 9.5% discount to NTA, but surprisingly, the share price is up around 19% over the last 12 months. Buy, hold, or sell? Um, this was probably not the right one to hang your hat on, hope, uh, hoping that I'll <laughs> my recommendation for Abella. Uh, it's another sell. In fact, it's probably one of the higher conviction sells, I would say. It's had horrible performance of about 4% a year over the last three years. Huge underperformance versus the index. 1.1% fees and, and a 15% performance fee avoid. James, everyone loves a discount. We all, we all like to see that we're getting a good deal. Is Antibodies Global a good deal? Buy, hold, or sell? Uh, I think it's 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 a discount for a reason there, Bella. It's a sell for me as well. I don't really see what they do that's uh, that's superstar amazing or different from from anything. If I invest in a leak, I like it to be for a real reason because there's there, there's some outperformance or some benefit or some sort of strategic advantage. I don't really see that they've got it, and it's going to have to be a sell for me. Well, it may not be a war zone, but the LAC space is pretty intense. Whether you're looking for a discount or fishing for the best of the best. There's something regal out there for everyone, except Chris. <laughs>